Sierra Tishkar, the senior editor of Grub Street, New York Magazine's food blog, and we're here in CBS This Morning's Toyota Green Room. I'm with Tori McPhail, who's the executive chef at Commander's Palace in New Orleans. Thanks for having me. Thank you for being here. Yeah. So Commander's opened in 1880? Yeah, it's got a, a heck wow. of a history. Absolutely right. How does that history inform your cooking? Well, I think before you do anything with Louisiana food, or any mm -hmm. food, I guess, of any, any region, you really need to be um, a quick study of the history of what's going on. You know, so yes. the history of Louisiana goes back more than 200 and some odd years. Um, mm -hmm. So for me, you have to, it has to be real. It has to be very, very authentic. Yes. And, and um, you know, you have to keep, keep, I guess, pushing yourself to do new food. And so mm -hmm. I always try to look backwards, understand all the ingredients and how they come together, and then really kind of um, look forward and do more modern cooking techniques and, uh, and better plating. Yes, because you want to be classic and timeless, but also modern. That's, and that's, the, mm -hmm. that's a tough um, line to walk. You know, we've got famous dishes mm -hmm. like turtle soup, right, still made with real snapping turtles. And I think we use more turtles than anybody else in the country. Uh -huh. And then great dishes like uh, bread pudding souffle that was uh, invented in uh, 1980. Isn't that yeah. great? <laughs> but you also want to have dishes that are going to gonna, uh, be on the cover of magazines, like really bright, crisp, clean, great Louisiana flavors. So uh -huh. it's, it's always kind of walking one foot in, um, in history and one foot in kind of a new school of cooking. So Definitely. it's fun. So you first worked at Commander's when you were 19. Yeah. And then you returned. Yeah, to that's big right. Homecoming. Um, how has your relationship to cooking changed as you've gotten older? Well, I think I've gotten a lot more um, well-rounded. You know, yeah. this is my third trip through Commander's Palace over the last 22 years. And then coming down to Louisiana from a small town in Washington State, it was a big eye-opening experience. Mm -hmm. um, but from there, I moved to Europe for a while, um, worked at the Breakers Hotel in Palm Beach, lived all over the U.S. and even in wow. Vegas. But New Orleans is something really, really special. And for me, mm -hmm. it's, it's the flavor, it's the spice, and the backdrop of the whole thing is people. Yes. It really is The really kindest is great. people. Yeah, and just to hear those people mm -hmm. tell their stories about um, you know, how they were celebrating the holidays, right, and what they might have had uh, from grandmother's recipe book mm -hmm. really inspires me to, be, um, to do better food all the time. Mm -hmm. And so it's, um, it's definitely fun to be in Louisiana with all that great cooking and all that great history. No, no other places like it. No, it's true. Yeah. And, and how have you seen um, New Orleans, the food scene there, change over the past few years? Because it really seems to rapidly be shifting. That's exactly right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So for the history in the 20-some years that I've been there, um, when I first got there as a teenage kid in the early 90s, mm -hmm. um, I felt like New Orleans was a town that had, uh, I wouldn't necessarily say like 15 or 20 recipes, but it definitely had like five great restaurants. Yes. Right? And then these days, especially from that little wind and rainstorm we had about 10, 10 years ago, now there's almost double the amount of yeah. restaurants, right? And there's this mm -hmm. huge upswell of young chefs coming up through, um, through the uh, stations and all the kitchens. Mm -hmm. And so it's a really exciting time. You still have grand dam restaurants like Commander's Palace, um, mm -hmm. but you can eat anywhere up and down Magazine Street or in the Central Business District and have really fun avant-garde uh, food. Yeah, it's really, it seems to be much more varied. Yeah, um, that's it. While still, you know, holding true to the roots. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. Yes. Yeah. I can't wait to get back. Well, come on. You have an open invitation anytime you want. <laughs> Thank you. So what do we have here? So we've got uh, a bunt cake, right? Okay. So how, how nice does that look? It right? looks With beautiful. all the uh, pillars and towers uh -huh. on top. Um, but this is spiced rum cake. I always love this around the holidays. And as I was cooking, um, kind of at the apron strings of my grandmother, we would have bunt cakes all the time. Okay. And it's just a celebratory kind of thing. Um, but the great thing about this is when it comes out of the oven, you can add a little pear simple syrup across the top Ooh. of it. So as it cools, it soaks in all that really good flavor. It, uh, it comes out, great. it looks fantastic. And it's just a great celebratory um, New Year's kind of a dish. Great. Well, thank you so much for being here, Tori. It's my pleasure. I really Thanks appreciate for having it. Me. And I'm Sierra Tishgarten, CBS This Morning's Toyota Green Room. Let's take a bite. Yeah. <laughs>